My research group has been interested for some time now on studying the interactions between the brain, the gut, and the gut microbiome. In one of our most recent publications, we were interested if this interaction, this relationship between the gut microbiome on, and the brain could potentially play, play a role in um, a common gastrointestinal syndrome, irritable bowel syndrome, or uh, IBS. And it has been stated that IBS is characterized by a state of dysbiosis, meaning altered gut microbiota. We looked at a population of well-characterized patients with irritable bowel syndrome um, that did not differ, that all met symptom criteria, did not differ uh, in their clinical features. And we looked at their gut microbiota with a technique called 16 RNS sequencing. So we were able to distinguish two subgroups of IBS patients, one that had a um, gut microbial composition, community structure identical to healthy controls, to a group of healthy subjects, um, and one that, that differed significantly. And part of the difference was related to the a difference in the ratio of two taxa of microbes, the Firmicutes and Bacteroidetes. Are these alterations in the gut microbiota of the one IBS subgroup, are they uh, correlated with alterations at the brain level, at structural brain features? Um, well, we found there was a difference if we just looked at the, the normal IBS group and the abnormal microbiome IBS group. In the brain structure, certain regions were larger, particularly in sensory brain regions, so regions that receive uh, input from the body. Uh, they were larger in the, in the patients with the abnormal uh, gut microbes. Interestingly, there was no clinical feature that really correlated with these uh, microbial or microbiome-based subtypes of patients. That's interesting because it would suggest that a dysbiosis or a microbial alteration is not essential to produce the symptoms of IBS. They may play some other role in this, in this complex um, disorder. But one association that we found was with the frequency of early adverse life events, which was more common, um, these, these reports are more common in the group that had the abnormal microbiota. So one could make a story that the um, correlation we found in adult patients started early in life was related to the experience of um, these early adverse life events, and which could be anything from um, severe illness of the mother, death of the mother, mother separation of the parents after um, marital discord, prolonged mar uh, marital discord, abuse, verbal, sexual, physical, all these um, factors obviously influence the brain, the developing brain. The brain sends, and we know this from other kinds of research, the brain sends signals down to the gut, these distress signals, and changes the activity, the function, the environment in which these microbes develop. So it is conceivable that um, these early experiences affect the gut microbiome, change the signals that they produce that ultimately reach the brain, and thereby have an influence on brain development in regions that uh, receive sensory input from the gut, the same regions that we found have increased regional volumes in this dysbiotic IBS group. So this was really the first, um, first study that demonstrated there is a, uh, an association between gut microbial architecture and brain architecture. Um, Obviously, this is not a causal study. We don't know if the microbes cause the brain changes or the, the, the difference in brain has an influence on gut microbial composition. But I think for the first time, it opens up um, in humans the possibility that there's really this communication that many animal studies had previously suggested or demonstrated, but um, very few studies in humans have actually demonstrated up to this point.